This is The Seven Clues to the Origin of Life by A.G. Kens Smith. To read the blurb, this book addresses, in the spirit of an intriguing detective story, the question of how life may have arisen on the earth. It relies on the methods of Sherlock Holmes, in particular his principle that one should use the most paradoxical features of a case to crack it. This approach to the essential biological problems is not merely light-hearted, but a fascinating scrutiny of some fundamental questions. Nature says, it is a summary of the best evolutionary thinking as applied to the origins of life in which the important issues are addressed pertinently, economically and with a happy recourse to creative analogies. New Statesman says, a splendid story. Here he sets it out in a way from which anyone, even those whose chemistry and biology stopped at 16, can learn. Seven Clues to the Origin of Life, a scientific detective story. You'll find that um, all of the quotations at the start and finish of each chapter here are quotations from uh, the Sherlock Holmes stories of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Preface Odd, Watson. Very odd. Faced with a really difficult-looking problem, should one follow the advice of Descartes or of Holmes? Should one proceed step by step from what is easily understood as Descartes advised, starting with what was simplest and easiest to know and rising little by little to the knowledge of the most complex? It sounds like good advice and on the whole modern science takes it. But the methodical step-by-step -step strategy does not always work. First steps can be particularly tricky and you have to know in which direction to go. There are times when you need the advice not of Descartes, but of Sherlock Holmes. You see, Holmes, far from going for the easy bits first, would positively seek out those features in a case that was seemingly incomprehensible. Singular features, he would call them. They can point the way. They can tell you what sort of a problem it is that you are dealing with. If you can see how the murder could have been done at all with the door and windows securely fastened, or if you can understand why on earth the thief should have rung the bell that gave away his presence in the room, why then, you may even have cracked the whole thing. I think that the origin of life is a Holmesian problem, that if we can understand how life could have started at all, then we would be able to work out, roughly at least, how it did start. Much of this book is devoted to seeking out and making as stark as possible the difficulties in the case of the origin of life on the earth. Not so that we can throw up our hands and say, look how impossible it all is. Not at all. Rightly or wrongly, we will be assuming that life really did arise on this earth from natural causes. We look for difficulties to see as clearly as possible what the real problem is and to fashion a key to unlock it. Seven Clues started from an idea to write a layman's version of my book Genetic Takeover, something much shorter with only a few technical terms and diagrams and no references. Since in any case the problem of the origin of life is one that calls for detective work, I thought it would be amusing to write the new book somewhat in the style of a detective story. You can read it like this if you want to, trying to foresee the curious conclusion that will start to emerge around chapter 10. There will be plenty of other implicit questions for you to think about, what are the real difficulties? Which are the main suspects? Where are the red herrings? What are the best clues? Or anyway, what does the author think they are? My choice of the seven best clues dropped at various stages in the book will be listed and located explicitly in the final chapter. I decided to have no references because one, 
laymen are not particularly interested in who did what when, and two, the co uh, cognoscenti know pretty well anyway, and then three, because I had already written a book that was full of references. So you will find no more than a little light name-dropping here and there. For laymen I need only stress that not all the ideas are original by any means. Even those that have some originality are derived from earlier ideas, and in any case the whole background of knowledge that allows one even to start speculating about our origins depends on innumerable experiments and observations by others. Then again ideas have been formed, sharpened or thrown out, as a result of very many discussions with friends and colleagues over many years. I would like to thank in particular those who actively helped in the preparation of this book by reading the manuscript and discussing it with me, Paul Breiterman, Colin Brown, Roger Buick, Jack Cohen, John Freer, Sally Gibson, Hyman Cartman and Kelvin Tyler, as well as my wife Dorothy Ann and my son Adam. I am grateful also to Janet McIntyre and to my daughter Sarah, who got the word smoothly onto the typescript by various electronic means. Glasgow Spring 1984, Graham Cairns Smith